Okay, greetings all you sensational sack lovers. We've got a really cool sack today. You guys are all going to love my sack. So anyway, I'm Petey Grace, and today I am talking about a cool uh, Swiss Army knife by Victorinox that dates to the 1946 to 1951 era. So what we've got here is a Model 237, uh, later known as the Camper, uh, just earlier on the uh, what was later known as the Standard and the Spartan was also sold as a Camper. So it's another one of those names that gets a little confusing with time. So what we got here, and you'll notice we've got a little cutout for the corkscrew. You don't see them on the later guys. You know, we've got the exposed awl. And let's take a look at a modern camper. This has the uh, hidden reamer, the corkscrew. There's no divot to pull it out. This has the uh, saw actually extends out so you can just grab the tip of it rather than having a nail neck. And this, of course, has the standard Victorinox can opener. That's one of the main changes here. On this one, we've got a five-turn corkscrew. Got a little bit of a twist to it, but no big deal. This has... Uh, and yeah, nickel silver liners. We've got the all or punch quarter round. Very cool. Nice, nice and sharp. Great work there. Then on the first layer where things get a little interesting. So you'll notice we've got a bottle opener and screwdriver. It's actually on the opposite side of where they are in modern knives. Once they switch that, when they released the other can opener, the new can opener, and it stayed that way ever since. But what we've got here is the lobster claw style can opener, or safety open, safety can opener, style can opener, whatever you want to call it. This is the type of can opener Victorinox employed uh, between the uh, uh, Warner type can opener that they used previously up till 1945 and the forward uh, combination uh, screwdriver can opener they released in 1951. So still an effective can opener, just does not give you the added benefit of being able to drive Phillips screws, which to me is a big loss. But remember, uh, Phillips screws would have been exceptionally rare in the 40s. Uh, they were only invented in the 30s and they didn't get into widespread use until even in, as late as the 70s and 80s, you would still see flathead screws and construction jobs and stuff. Then we've got the beautiful polished saw. It was a little scratched out, but it did ha it does have a factory mirror polish rather than what the uh, modern saws have, which is a brushed finished. And there's vertical brush strokes on this and this is just, you know, besides being scratched up a little bit from use, it is in fact a mirror polish on that saw. And of course you notice it has a nail nick because this saw does not extend out far enough for you to grab the end of it. Then we've got the much worn, much loved clip blade. So this has obviously seen a lot of work. I don't know if it's been repaired or just worn down. I have a feeling it's just been worn down because this comes out pretty far. Uh, yeah, I think it was just worn down. Very possible it was repaired. Either way, still very usable if you wanted to. And then the main event is this guy right here. And you can just barely see the etch right now. If you look real close, put your eyes enough. It says Modini Locarno. Uh, I didn't really look into it. I would be surprised if it's anything but the cutler or store that sold it and Locarno is a city in Switzerland which is very common to see on uh, Swiss Army knives from the 40s through the 60s and even into the 70s. Then we've got the the famous cross with the Armée Suisse wording on it. That's where we get the name Swiss Army knife from. Uh, yeah, that's why we call them Swiss Army knives. 
And then enoxid, uh, a shortened form of the French enoxidab, which uh, is just rust free or stainless steel. So anyway, nice full blade left on this one. Great action, love this knife. I love collecting, uh, just, I, I love these old. They just got such a cool feeling to them. They really do. Uh, uh, you'll hear people say that the new ones aren't built like they used to and yeah there's a few changes but really the quality is still absolutely there uh, some of the changes they've made just flat out make sense um, you know for, for various reasons uh, you will hear people say oh well the steel they used thicker blade stock back then which um, am I even on the right layer yeah you uh they, yeah, they are a bit thinner, you know, probably about a, a, a you know, maybe not a, quite a whole millimeter, maybe a whole millimeter thicker, but, um, uh, you know, I would argue that it doesn't really add or subtract any, uh, you know, effectiveness from the tool, actually. Uh, you know, of course, it's very uh, appealing to have a thicker blade, sounds tougher and stuff, but really, you know, unless you're like going to be prying or doing something stupid with it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the, the, my, I would suggest, I would uh, uh, entertain the idea that the modern steel is probably uh, more consistent and of higher quality at a more consistent level. So you probably have about the same amount of strength, even though you have slightly less material being used. Either way, it, it really doesn't affect the use of them or the, the durability of them. Uh, of course, the plastic handles can break, but you know, because the thing is the plastic handles can fall right off and the knife will still function perfectly fine. It'll just not be quite as stylish with its uh, dashing red covers. So, I think I've rambled on enough now. Oh yeah, let's look at one more cool one. Hold on. And then just for, just for, uh, because I like 84 millimeter models and I've got to bring it around. Here is a 237KU, which is a small camper with a bail. So you've got a modern 91, a 91 from 46 to 51, and then a, uh, uh, small camper that can range from anywhere from like 1960 to 1968 thereabouts very cool awesome little set of tools uh the camper the only thing it's missing for me is the scissors you know you add scissors on this guy give me a small huntsman and i am absolutely smitten can't say enough nice things about the small huntsman they need to bring back 84s. I know it's not going to happen, but we can all dream, right? Anyway, thanks for watching. Petey Grizz out.